Robots. We see them everywhere. They assist humans in performing repetitive and dangerous tasks. They can be as small as a cent or as big as a building. They can explore inner depths of the earth or the outer reaches of the space. Robots are currently being used in the fields like manufacturing industries, aerospace, healthcare, military, and the list is endless. In manufacturing industry, tasks such as welding, painting, assembly, and testing are carried out by robots with high precision. But it all started with a giant robot arm. In 1961, the first industrial robot, Unimate, was used in the assembly line at General Motors plant. By simply pushing buttons, you could move Unimate and record the positions for it to repeat them. A magnetic drum is used to store the instructions, which will be implemented in a step-by-step -step process. Since then, we have come a long way. But how is this possible? A robot observes, decides, and acts. Sensors observe the environment and provide feedback to a controller. Modern robots are equipped with a variety of sensors such as cameras, gyroscopes, IR sensors, and LiDAR. The controller is the brain of the robot that takes the information perceived by the sensors and makes decisions. The signals generated by the controller are sent to the robot's actuators to perform actions. As the robot moves, the sensors perceive new information and provide that information to the controller and this completes a feedback loop. A dual to the classic control problem is known as estimation. Often, we do not use raw sensor data. We run algorithms on sensor data to estimate the quantities we want to measure. For instance, in an application called Simultaneous Localization and Mapping or SLAM, we estimate the 3D geometry of the feature points of the environment and the robot's location simultaneously using a 2D camera. And that's how the robot can control its position even though it doesn't have a GPS. The motion of the robot must be controlled so as to perform a certain task. This is usually done by programming. Programming industrial robots can be divided into three basic methods. Teach mode programming, lead through programming, learning from demonstrations. In teach mode programming, a person can use the switches on a teaching pendant to guide the robot through a sequence of events. The positions are stored for the robot to repeat the actions with the help of a controller. This method is very useful in teaching simple movements. However, this may not be preferred where robots are frequently reprogrammed. The next method is lead through programming. In this method, a person will lead the robot manually through the desired positions. The robot will store these positions and repeat the movements using a motor controller. The third method of programming is learning from demonstrations. In this method, the robot collects a set of demonstrations of the user performing a certain task. Then a mathematical function is generated to encode this task. Using this mathematical function, reference commands are generated for the robot to follow. The robot controller knows its current state from the sensors which it uses to generate a mismatch or an error between the reference commands. This error is used by the robot controller to correct its position and orientation. Since the robot was taught to perform a task by encoding the task in a mathematical function, this function can be used to reproduce reference commands in different situations such as avoiding obstacles. So, we talked about programming industrial robots. How do we program other kinds of robots, you ask? Well, that's a question for another day.